Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms. Today we finally get into some more Chiefs film. I'm excited to finally be back into it. They just started day two of their mandatory minicamp today. LDT is getting more reps there. And I think that the offensive line is starting to come along a little bit. I'm still interested to see how right guard is going to shape out. I expect it to be LDT the starter as the season begins. I think that Long will work his way around. He'll have an interesting battle. It'll be interesting definitely at that spot. But everywhere else is, is going to be kind of fun. That entire right side is actually going to be kind of fun. I think that LDT Remmers might start the season and then it might go differently in terms of maybe Niang's right tackle. Maybe Long works his way back after his injury recovery gets back into the starting rotation. Either way, they're going to find ways to get the ball into Clyde over to Lair's hands. This season is really how they're going to, at least in my opinion, shape up why they took him in the first place. Because if you look back to last year, before Le'Veon Bell got into the mix, which let's not even go there right now, um, he was the bell cow. Like he was getting touches one way or another, whether it was in the run game. And if it wasn't in the run, excuse me, it wasn't in the run game, it was in the passing game. And that's not the right table. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is I really believe that Clyde is primed for a legitimate breakout. He's not only got the, <clears throat> excuse me, the physical tools to really break out in the NFL, but I do believe that he showed multiple times the willingness to want to get better. He welcomed Le'Veon Bell into his into the you know into the organization, basically knowing he was going to start seeing a split with his carries. And the first week of the season, obviously, he comes out with 25 attempts, over 130 yards, a touchdown. He only had two targets in that game because they didn't need to throw him the ball that much. Uh, the next game, 10 carries, but eight targets. So they kind of offset it sometimes. Yeah, he went. He had eight targets against the Chargers, six against Baltimore, uh, eight against the Raiders, four against Buffalo, four against Denver, three, five, six again against Miami. So really when it came down to more of a passing situation, they did attempt to target him. And that's really what I want to focus on for the most part today. I know that we're going to get a little bit more into his actual running skills as well. We're actually going to lead off the film session here with some of his running skills, which I loved to see. I liked to see that the Chiefs wanted to get him involved in the Super Bowl as much as they, they possibly thought they could. I think that's one area that Mahomes has learned that he can actually take some chances now with those RPOs multiple times. I went back and I watched it just to see and to get some of this some of these clips here to see exactly what Mahomes was talking about. And the very actually the very first play of the game he did exactly what he was talking about where he took the ball out of the mesh point when he should have just handed it off Clyde could have gotten 10 15 yards on that run so let's go ahead and jump into some of this film here I think that uh one thing that I really like about Clyde is for most for the most of the time if you're a coach an offensive line an offensive coordinator whatever it is you want to put your running back in the position to where if he's in a one-on-one, -on -one, that's a ideal. Like the, that's that makes perfect sense, and it is. Uh, you think he can win that situation, so that's what they ended up doing here specifically. And yeah, it works. They didn't mean to, but as you can see, the right tackle there, uh, Andrew Wiley, just kind of whiffs on his block attempt at number fifty-eight down here, which is Shaq Barrett. I'm not going to get into exactly how I thought this game was going to go, but again, you're going to see him try to block down here. Barrett's going to come up inside here. And that's really what this comes down to. It's just one-on-one -on -one in the backfield, but everywhere else is actually blocked up pretty well. The shift over here, they, they move the linebackers over to cover, come down. You get some of that movement from Travis Kelsey coming down here. You get a little bit of movement from Devin White out here, even from Levante David to kind of look where the mesh point is. And that allows Wisniewski here to get to the second level easier. Obviously, with the whiff here, you're looking at Clyde 100% with his eyes on Shaq Barrett. And when you get to see in the, you know, the open field, because that's essentially what this is, you're, you're seeing open field here, is that nice little dip And execution from Clyde. 
video is being a little slow right now. Wonder what's going on. All right, there we go. Caught up. Jeez, sorry about that. Um, this program is still a little slow at times. So working on trying to get better view, video programming for this and, and viewing and whole recording process. So it's more work in progress for me. So I do apologize for the little glitch there. But again, like I said, what I like to see from him is as soon as he gets that me the mesh point and he turns into his right eyes, the eyes go to Shaq Barrett, the only place he can go. And you can see the, obviously the, the design of what the Buccaneers were really trying to do specifically. There's no one here in terms of defenders, except they're all up at the line or they were all in coverage. And that's what they did. One, you got one, two, three, four, five, six guys in the box, which lends itself to playing a little bit better for the Chiefs offensive line. Yeah, you're going to see the whiff here, but it, it opens up this whole lane. So Clyde does a good job of just jumping out that jump cut right there and accelerating. That's what it is. The, he's not the speed guy. Like that's not what he's going to bring to this team. He's going to bring burst. The burst that he has is some of the best out of the 2020 draft at the running back position. He's got very good short area quickness and very good burst after he gets into that hole. So one thing that I think that goes under noticed is how he can carry himself in the running lane and one thing specifically i want you to look at here on this run in particular is this is going to open up pretty well as a running lane okay it's going to open up pretty well here but you, you watch him just kind of stick close to his offensive lineman because one you're, you're not trying to just get into this open space with defenders here coming down to look at you you can maximize the space that you're given you hug close to your offensive lineman on this specific play and, and it gives you more room to move and, and maneuver as well so you can see him here like look at this there's a lot of space up here a lot of space over here but if you get here like say you he jump cuts out here okay say he jump cuts to this to the hash marks but guess what happens that reduces the angle that this this uh this defender has to go after him so it's a pretty smart move here just to get upfield right there and, and still always fighting for extra yards is something you see with his runs it's a very common thing among him among his runs and one of the big things that you noticed about his run against the denver broncos for that touchdown i didn't include it here because i think we've all seen it at this point just be un deniable into the end zone he does have some ability to really get going and use that contact balance and tackle breaking ability that people kind of underrate in my opinion and i think that he did have an opportunity to maybe get to where he wanted to go a little bit earlier in this specific play um the running the vision is still very good but i think sometimes he has lapses where he's trying to run with the offensive line for this zone specifically but then he he finally sees that cutback lane right there and he and eventually gets to it but again hugging the offensive line is very important there and it allows him to get an extra probably five six seven yards on there so i did enjoy seeing that from him it's an area that i think a lot of people can overlook and definitely something that when you don't have the speed of like a, Dam a Damian Williams that we he, we saw him against the Vikings, you know, take that cutback lane and go over 91 yards to the, t to the end zone. So he doesn't have that. So he has to use different abilities to be able to find more yards in his runs when he has open space like that. And I think that that's one of those examples that shows you how he's able to really read the field and read the players around him. This is something that the Chiefs really should have done more of. Just give him a seam. Like, this is what I'm expecting to see more of this year, specifically because this is a, a draw play. It's kind of a, a quick draw play. You can see he Mahomes takes the snap, quickly looks out to his right, and then they hand the ball off. And there's a very good reason for that. This is the first play of the second half, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But majority of everyone here is all waiting because of that so if you can force the defense to wait and not run up into into gaps then you can really affect what you can do in the run game you can get guys to second level easier and do a much better job of 
just all around creating holes for your running backs. And that's exactly what they did here. He wasn't touched until right there, like 10 yards down the field. You, that's how they're going to make Clyde more successful because yes, he can make guys miss in the backfield and churn out four or five, six yards sometimes. But ideally you don't want to have to have a running back do that. Like Clyde was, I mean, excuse me, Kareem Hunt was great at doing that. And that's one of the things about Clyde, uh, about Clyde that, is sort of reminiscent of of him because he can make guys miss in the backfield. But I think that Hunt's ability to not only break tackles in the backfield, but run people over without really losing momentum is what allowed him to do that at early on in his career and, and still now. Clyde's a little bit uh, slimmer. He's a bit shorter. He's not as, as big. and He does lose some of that momentum at times. But here, this is the kind of blocking you need to see from an offensive line specifically, if a defense is going to be playing against coverage, they're going to think that you're just wanting to play coverage. So, I mean, look, look, look at this. He's already got the ball in his hands and he knows where he's going to go with it. That's the kind of thing you can do here with an offensive line, even just a little bit. It's just a little bit. It's just some push and, and some manipulation from the cov from, uh, you know, the coverages and things like that. So, Get him in space. Just give him a little seam, a crease, something that can allow him to do what he does best. Get up field. This is something that Clyde can do and has really did quite well in the games where they blocked decently for him. Like he's he's going to have a good year, in my opinion. And this is one of the reasons why early on in the season, they did try to use him differently in the passing game. But I think when it came down to realizing that their offensive line wasn't as good, that's when you saw Darrell Williams come into the fold as that pass protection option if they needed it. Clyde's the much better pass catcher. He's the much better route runner. And he can find space and do things with the ball in the air that, that Darrell Williams can't do. This is what's going to make him more fantasy relevant this year, in my opinion, specifically, because if we're talking, yeah, he's going to have a better year overall in general. He's going to help the Chiefs win games, but also there's a fantasy element to everything we talk about with offense, specifically the running backs, because they're one of the most, depending on how you view fantasy football, one of the most dynamic point getters in your on your team they can do it from the running and the passing game is specifically so up until Le'Veon Bell got into Kansas City Clyde was still a fringe RB1 he was still playing at a very high level and the volume was there the yards were there touchdowns not so much and the way that the Chiefs were giving him goal line carries early on because they wanted him to get those goal line carries they think he's a good goal line back he is a good goal line back but the offensive line was not a goal line offense. It's a finesse offensive line. They have changed the dynamic of their offensive line to allow for more goal line carries for Clyde. So I think that's going to bump up his touchdowns. And then things like this right here is what's going to allow him to create big plays. And yes, it's a kind of a zone busted coverage and he finds up the seam here, but this is one of my favorite routes for a running back. And it's something that if we look back to 2000, 18, 2019, you know, 2017, even with Alex Smith, at quarterback, the chiefs would exploit defenses with their running backs down the field, specifically Kareem hunt multiple times. If we remember against the Patriots twice in back-to-back -back years, they used this almost identical seam type route where he's just running up the seam to gash defenses. They have to be able to do this in 2021 and going on because Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill are going to be double. I, they're going to bring so much gravity to each other. You have to have another playmaker step up in the passing game. Hardman's going to be an option. I think Pringle's going to have an opportunity as well. But Clyde has to be an option specifically downfield. If you're going to allow the Chiefs offense to pass protect one-on-one, -on -one, which Andy Reid likes to do, leave his tackles on an island with Creed Humphrey at center, who can identify blitzes better and better line up Mahomes where he can get the ball out quickly. That's really what this is going to come down to because here they only rush four. They try to stunt up in and out, but Mahomes is able to identify where the coverage is going to go up the seam and he's able to get out to his right and find this ball for Clyde. That's what's really going to be. This is going to come down to, I think that he's going to have a great 
option in order to really bump up those pass catching numbers and probably add a few passing touchdowns, uh, pass catching touchdowns as well. This is all just like a basic flare route that he ends up coming up. But again, you're going to see the ability that he's got in this one play. He shows so many different things, so many different levels to what he can bring as a pass catcher. And obviously you're not down in the NFL when your knee is down, but I'm not entirely sure that he ever was like, no, this is, this is one of those things that I really like about him, his balance. Like, look at this, look at this balance here with, with the ball in his hands. He's perpendicular with the ground and he's still able to stay up. Maybe that's his knee, but I'm not so sure. But again, like he's able to stay up and then he spins and spins again. If that guy wasn't there, he's probably getting free twice off of two different spins. Like that's next level stuff from Clyde edwards helaire And it, it really shows you the tough toughness he is, he's got, especially with, you know, the fact that he got his helmet taken off in this specific play. But again, the, the balance and the quickness combined with pass catching is a very important thing because not only is he going to be seeing a lot of these targets in the flat and these with these different flare routes specifically i think that you're going to see him get more opportunities one-on-one in space and that's going to be an area he can really exploit to my uh, my eye and i really really like that option so one thing that really goes underrated about clyde's passing prowess is like this is a great route one because he seeks out contact and when you're running a, running a route and you're coming up to anybody, for example, like right here, this linebacker stops. He shows a little bit inside. When he comes out of the backfield, he shows up a little bit inside. What that does is it forces the linebacker to stop moving in any way, shape, or form with velocity going one direction. Because you can typically switch that velocity from going forward to backward a little bit easier than you can from stopping it forward. And that's going to allow Clyde to get free up the sideline because with that slight hesitation he creates, he creates a lane, all this space. He can just run right by him. And then that ball tracking, he shifts his shoulders back from inside to go outward to locate that, to locate the ball. That's an underrated part of his game. We all know that he runs very good routes. We saw it at LSU. This is something that really exemplifies the player that he can be if they allow him to run these deeper routes, ball tracking, just the, the softness that he plays with his hands, he's able to corral that ball. Like it's, it's different. So I really love seeing him pass, you know, pass catching. And then obviously one thing that we saw dramatically drop last year were the chiefs screen game it was the chiefs screen game. That specifically for me is where they need to have this offensive line be a, a lot better and what they're going to effectively try to improve upon this year because he can be such an excellent screen a, an excellent screen game back to the burst that he has from catch to run and, and to attack essentially from the catch to attack conversion is one of the best in the nfl Still right there. He can get upfield. He can, he can weave his way through traffic. He can make guys miss. And when you have an offensive line that can get downfield that with some power and move guys out of the way, that's going to be just as important as I'm sorry. I just saw Austin Ryder doing everything that I know that he's ever done on any type of play and just whiffing. And I, it just, I can't deal with it, but back to Clyde because he is the reason we're doing this video. And this is the guy who's going to have a huge breakout season for the Chiefs on the ground and through the air. He's going to help them in multiple facets. And he's going to make himself extremely fantasy relevant, in my opinion. I think he's going to be an RB1. He's going to be a top 10 NFL uh, or running back in the NFL with, in terms of every, everything. I think that he's going to have a great season. He had, you know, over what it was like 1300 scrimmage yards or 1100 scrimmage yards as a rookie who missed games. Like that's still a really good number for a guy who missed time. And we're just kind of that can't be underestimated. And Andy Reed loves to use his running backs and we've seen it all throughout, you know, not only his 
career as a head coach, but his time in Kansas City, too. He made guys like Spencer Ware and Turkendrick West, who, yeah, we love as, as Chiefs fans, but they weren't exactly great running backs. They did some things well, and Andy was able to utilize them with their good offensive lines and get the best out of them and still make them fantasy relevant. So Clyde's going to be fine, and I think that a lot of people are cooling on the fact that he was drafted so high last year in all realms of fantasy football, but he's going to pay off that this year by being a great value. You can get probably in the third round. So probably late second, I would say late seconds when I would typically look at him. But again, Clyde's going to have himself a very, very nice season. The chiefs need him to step up from a pass catching perspective. And I think getting a full season, a full off season under him, will help also with the pass protection aspect that you have to have when you're on the field, especially on those third down situations. Daryl will still get involved. I think that Jerick McKinnon might take some of those third down situations as well. But early downs, when he's on the groove, I think they're just going to keep rolling with him, especially if the offensive line can, excuse me, pass protect at a high level. They can improve his usage in terms of running actual routes. They can line them up on the outside in the slot use him to their advantage and use the things that he does well in route running and finding one-on-one matchups and exploit those against defenses, which they really need to do considering, you know, they're going to have to run the football a little bit better this year and they're going to have to utilize Clyde in matchups against linebackers and safeties. They, they have to, otherwise, why did you draft him in the first round? Like, I don't like to ask those kinds of questions myself, because I don't have any control over past changes. But again, I wasn't someone who would have taken a running back in the first round. But you drafted him, and then you talked about how insanely good he was. You know, he reminded you of Brian Westbrook when you watched him, as Andy Reid said. And he was exceptional as a pass catcher, and they used him a ton as one. So if they don't start doing that, that's where the issue comes with wasting draft capital on players like McCall Hardman and Clyde Edwards-Alaire if you draft them and you don't use them when you for what you think you need to use them for. So I do believe that that step is going to be taken this year. So with that said, we're going to wrap this one up because I'm just really, really excited about Clyde myself. Yes, I loved when they drafted him, even though I wasn't going to a running back guy in the first round. It doesn't matter to me anymore. He's a chief, and I hope to see him take that step this year. And I truly believe that he will. So I hope you guys have a great day and thank you very much. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR football.